Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jessie Leons. This edition's top story is the Ministry of Education rolls out numeracy hours to improve student performance in mathematics. Entrepreneurs to access guaranteed loans in a COVID relief program from Bank of St. Lucia. And the OECS Sustainable Development Movement to usher in a new thinking. The Ministry of Education has implemented a new program aimed at improving student performance in mathematics. Education officials have presented learning materials to participating schools in the program dubbed Numeracy Hours. Lisa Joseph has more. The Numeracy Hours program is an initiative spearheaded by the delivery unit in the office of the Prime Minister through the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development. Numeracy Hours is a pilot program geared towards Forms 4 and 5 students in four secondary schools struggling with math concepts. The Numeracy Coach in the Ministry of Education works directly with the identified schools. Mathematics Curriculum Officer Janella Gifford explains the process. Coming into the schools, doing observations, lessons of observations, working with the teachers in terms of the um, delivery of the, the lessons, also providing assistance to students as well, students who are also struggling in the classroom. Our hope for this program is by 2022 and even this 2021 next year that our students we would see a slight improvement in their scores. Generally, we hope to motivate our students to inculcate in them that love for mathematics because really and truly they, some of them have been struggling. The schools in the pilot phase are Cicero Secondary, Patricia D. James Secondary, Sir Ira Simmons Secondary and Miko Secondary. The students start with a baseline assessment at the beginning of the school year. In December, there's also another assessment, a midterm assessment, and at the end of the year, there's also an assessment. In addition to those standardized assessments coming from the ministry's end, of course, the assessments that the teachers give within the classrooms are also monitored. The principal of the Cicero Secondary School, Adi Paul, welcomes the intervention program and the resources provided to the school. So the resources we have, like calculators, geometry sets, algebra tiles, we have graph tiles for you to work with. So all these resources that you can manipulate and see how they operate and function while you learn might excite you. So we are hoping that it does what it is intended to do and that the teachers get the reward from it which is your performance. So we are grateful to the team from Numeracy Hours for the donation. It is something worthwhile and something critical for us to improve on. Over at the Sir Ira Simmons Secondary School, Numeracy coach Ian Hippolyte lamented the mathematics scores over the last six years and expressed optimism that the Numeracy Hours program will positively impact the performance of students. I'm specifically excited about the algebra tiles. Because you, uh, we know algebra is difficult, has been difficult for you, and pose some, some difficulty for you in that it is an abstract concept. So what we have decided to do is that, okay, we're going to get some algebra tiles. So you can manipulate the tiles. You can complete the square with the tiles. You can factorize using those tiles. So I am extremely excited about that resource, a little bit more than the others, because I know that it will be beneficial to you. Principal Martina Belizaire says with the provision of tools, teachers and students are now better equipped to realize the change. I am specifically happy that we were able to get this projector. As you know, now with the digital platforms that we're using and teachers want to engage students meaningfully in the ICT program, we know without a doubt the projector and the screen will definitely go a long way. We often have situations where students do not have their materials at school and that poses a hindrance to the execution of the, the lessons and having the manipulatives, having the calculator and all the other resources that you have provided to the school will without a doubt go a long way in assisting our students to do a lot better at mathematics. The presentation was made on September 10th, 2020. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in.
And meantime, in observance of International Literacy Day on September 8th, the Department of Education moved to enhance early childhood education to address literacy challenges in the population. Details in this report. According to UNESCO, despite progress made at reducing illiteracy, some 617 million young people have not mastered basic literacy and numeracy skills, yet many of them are in school. It further states that 773 million are illiterate adults. On the occasion of International Literacy Day, Director General Audrey Azoulay invites all those involved in education to, quote, redouble their investments and mobilize all their resources to unleash the potential of each individual in the service of a shared world, unquote. In St. Lucia, the Department of Education reiterates its commitment to improving literacy rates of the population. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer shares the view that literacy challenges faced by adults are the result of problems that might have been resolved in their early childhood years. She laid bare the literacy crisis on Ireland. We note that it's one of our issues, one of our major issues where our students leave secondary school and they aren't literate. They cannot, in some cases, do the most basic of things that they require for employability, that they, inquire, that they require for the rest of their lives. So it is to look it in the eye and say, where are the gaps? And in particular, I want to look at early childhood, infant school, what is happening and what needs to be improved upon so that our children move from early childhood centers into infant school, into primary school with the necessary prerequisites. International Literacy Day 2020 draws focus on literacy, teaching and learning in the COVID-19 crisis and beyond, highlighting literacy learning in a lifelong learning perspective, targeting adolescents and adults. Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, Dr. Didikas Jules, is an advocate for adult literacy. What we need to recognize is that literacy is not something that happens only in schools. And therefore, the challenge of literacy in the wider society is, is a very broad challenge that, need to be tack that needs to be tackled at many levels. Mm -hmm. And um, the, what, is, what is then required is that we we look at adult literacy. That is something that has not been adequately attended to in many of our societies. And um, the question of post-school learning, so it's not just um, learning to read within school, but after school, the opportunities that adults are being given, and the relevance of, of the material that is being used to promote that. Um, I come from a school of literacy that's very influenced by Paulo Freire, a Latin American educator that believes that we don't just learn to read the word, but we learn to read the world. So the process of literacy must involve um, a multidisciplinary approach that helps you not just develop the mechanics of reading, but also the process of critical thinking and of understanding what you read. International Literacy Day is observed annually since 1967 to remind the public of the importance of literacy as a matter of dignity and human rights and to advance the literacy agenda towards a more literate and sustainable society. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. Still with education, the Department of External Affairs has informed that the education sector will soon benefit from support by the Government of Canada. This is through the funding of laptop computers for primary school teachers. The effort to secure support by education was led by His Excellency Anton Edmonds, St. Lucia's High Commissioner to Canada. The Department of External Affairs worked closely with the Ministry of Education, which will be identifying the beneficiaries. The High Commission of Canada to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean will be making over 65,000 Canadian dollars available through the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives. Owners of micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, are now able to access guaranteed loans from Bank of St. Lucia through the assistance of the Eastern Caribbean Partial Credit Guarantee Corporation, ECPCGC. 
BOSL is the first of two financial institutions within the region to sign with the corporation in June 2020. Here are the details. In a continuing effort to stimulate the economy and find the negative effects of COVID-19, Bank of St. Lucia has partnered with the Eastern Caribbean Partial Credit Guarantee Corporation to launch a pilot program targeting the island's micro, small, and medium-sized business sector. According to the Chief Executive Officer, Carmen Gomez-Trigg, the program will guarantee 75% of loans up to a maximum loan amount of $300,000 to qualifying MSMEs within six participating ECCU countries, which includes Antigua, the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and St. Lucia. The scheme is meant to alleviate some of the hardship faced by the micro, small, and medium entrepreneurs as they access finance to grow their businesses. Although we are a new corporation, the Bank of St. Lucia has taken a leap of faith and become a pioneer in the program. They were the first bank in the currency union to become a participating lender in this scheme. This means that their staff has been trained in our processes and they are now ready to accommodate your inquiries on the guarantee scheme. We knew the challenges that our micro, small, medium enterprises were faced with in terms of meeting that important collateral requirement for loans. And secondly, um, coming directly out of the COVID-19 scenario where those businesses were constrained in terms of their revenues, we saw it critically important that we provide some form of stimulus to them in terms of the continuity of the operations. So for us, it, it, it was both timely and critically important for them that we partner with the corporation in providing that level of assistance. Though the initiative has removed a major hurdle for MSMEs in the loan application process, the acting managing director of Bank of St. Lucia, Medford Francis, says that owners of MSMEs must also meet the basic eligibility requirements for the loan. It's important that we first define what a micro, small, medium enterprise is for the purposes of this intervention. A micro, small, medium enterprise would be an enterprise that generates no more than $2 million in annual sales or revenue. Also, for the purposes of this intervention, such enterprises should not employ more than 50 persons. So this is the, the most important eligibility requirement. Additionally, the program requires MSMEs to be incorporated and operating for at least two to three years with a well-documented track record. Bank of St. Lucia customers who apply and meet the requirements of this guarantee loan will be able to receive access to credits, which can be used to grow and expand their business and the overall economy of St. Lucia. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The much-anticipated OECS Sustainable Development Movement 2020 Summit that is scheduled for the 23rd and 24th of September 2020 promises to be an exciting space for senior government officials, industry and private sector leaders, global entrepreneurs and civil society to converge and gain unlimited access and to practical tools and winning strategies to support growth by world-renowned leaders, industry experts and thought leaders. OECS Director General Dr. Didicus Jules explains that this mass event was originally planned to be physically held in St. Lucia. However, due to the onset of COVID-19, the summit will now be held virtually. It is going to be unlike anything anyone has experienced in the Caribbean before because it is, it is not just a, a Zoom call with people talking. It is going to be a, a, a real simulation of a virtual exhibition hall with rooms, with exhibitions, with um, showcasing events, with interactions between persons, um, access to various sessions according to the level of ticketing that one has. So it will be very much a, a virtual simulation of an actual exhibition event.
The summit will feature headline presenters including Les Brown, world-renowned motivational speaker, Damon John, star of the ABC network program Shark Tank, and serial entrepreneur Chinedo Eshuero. We have a number of high-level investors who are coming on board to support the investment pitch with Damon John. Um, what we hope to be the legacy of that experience is that we will have an entire grouping of high-level entrepreneurs, people who have set up billion-dollar investment funds, who are now going to be supporting the OECS in helping to do that investment. An ongoing business model competition precedes the OECS Sustainable Development Movement 2020 Summit, looking to select eight entrepreneurs to make their pitch to Shark Tank's Damon John. Next week's summit is a culmination of a series of activities over the last five months that have sought out-of-the-box solutions to socio-economic challenges as well as a capitalizing on the embedded opportunities from these challenges. For more information on the summit and to register, visit oecssdm.com. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayal. them loose the anxieties the worries open up to possibilities accept the uncertainties and cut them loose the bitterness the hopelessness plant a seed of hope in your mind it will grow and flourish in time Hold on a little longer. Life encourages you to grow. You have so much to offer. Look, tomorrow is waiting to say hello. Don't give up on yourself. Instead, reach out for help. Perhaps it's time to reach out to someone. Call the Health Helpline 203 toll-free anytime to speak to a professional. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayal. Merci autant, Jesse. Merci, Madame Department, Kenny West Cosability, pour information à gouvernement de la GIS, et Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle à Aquayal. Capuzato Primus Hutchinson. Tout le monde qui a voyagé sur cette liste pour l'autre pays, quand il a trouvé testé, souhaite un polyclinique et bien à l'hôpital pour traitement de maladie et étouffement. Après ça, selon le soumane au ministre de santé, personne qui ne brise un fait l'opération et bien ni pour voyager sur cette liste, il a trouvé testé à l'hôpital Victoria et bien c'est l'autre institution santé spéciale pour trouver traitement ça là. Le monde public qui a ni brisé traitement ça là. Sa visite polyclinique à Gozile, et bien Wellness Center à Vieux-Fort. Sa ka ave lab lundi pour vendredi depi 8 heures pour jis 4 heures après midi. Et ka koute yon sa dola mériche, et bien 267 dola la janou. Sa ve sa la ousi ka ave lab à l'hôpital Victoria et l'hôpital Owen King depi 2 heures pour 3 heures après midi. Ministère a ka konseye tout moun pou pote mas a soufri dja yo, et kosi pou ni kat identifikasyon yo, et pou pozete ila yo ka atwe an se facilite sa la. Il y a aussi qu'à y trouver la meilleure sanitaise, et bien, vous savez, pour traiter la meilleure avant de rentrer avec le ministère, car pour être toutes les qui sont nécessaires pour faire assurer que tout le monde est bien protégé pour sa santé. Personne qui n'a pas besoin de plus d'informations, ça téléphone le numéro 458-6500. Quand l'école veut commencer l'opération pour une saison 9, les parents parlent pour 3 cassés de l'école, 3 concernant les populations, les étudiants continuent l'école pour un pour l'autre. Selon le chef officier d'éducation, Dr. Fiona Mayer, l'importance de l'école, ce n'est pas à souci quantité d'étudiants qui a dit dans Dr. Mayer, qui parlait concernant les diverses démarches que le ministère a pris pour ménager les de l'école en bas de la corona, déclare que ce qui a apporté plus d'importance à une initiative nouvelle, c'est pour l'année corporation par tout qui est l'intérêt à l'éducation des étudiants et protection contre la maladie corona en bas de nouveau système de l'école PIA. Il y a l'école qui est en train de faire, l'école qui est en train de faire. Donc nous n'avons pas apprécié l'année pour nous différence. Mais la différence n'est pas dit 
qu'on y en a qui plus mais passer l'autre. Parce que ça nous voulait garder pour c'est quality. Nous voulait garder pour qu'on plus meilleur nous ça éduquer ma mère là. Pas seulement qui joue qui ne plie qui monte qui ne plie joue parce qu'on a l'autre. C'est pas ça. Mais nous savons nous quand on les travaille avec um, département santé avec nous toujours j'ai un plaisir si pour hot département santé nous quand travaille avec yo avec yo qui aide nous yo qui supporte nous avec quand nous regarder nous j'a porter ma main entre qui mène nous qui continuer est-ce la canne changement en de en de en de lot um term term second term nous qui couyer qui qui vini mais nous voulons travailler nous voulons réfléchir à ce ça nous qui fait aussi avec garder comment nous ça fait plus meilleur avec style à côté nous ni pour vie de et puis garder encore et puis critique ça nous qui fait nous aussi qui continuer de faire ça parce que nous ni yon seul bail nous voulons faire c'est pour garder qui maman nous en plus bon santé le pratique qui acheté l'huile coco capoté noa magic j'ai trouvé conseil pour retourner pièce bouteille déjà commencé servi et ben bouteille pas encore ouvert ministère des affaires commerce investissement et affaires les consommateurs j'ai informé public là qui depuis le 8 septembre 2020 bureau of standards t'a fait un annoncement pour public là concerné action qui prend pour business qui ca vend produit ça là trouver à ce qui tire à sur l'établi toute bouteille qui ca porter nous l'huile coco magic ça c'est parce que bureau of standards découvert que c'est cette bouteille ça là par compliant avec compliant mais par qu'à suivre le règne national qui est obligé à la loi PIA, spécifiquement pour l'huile coco. Alors, les consommateurs, eh bien, pièces de business qui ont acheté ces produits-là, ils ont commandé pour double servir immédiatement. Et ils ont dit Real Refined Coconut Oil, BN037, BN039, BN040, et Magic Refined Coconut Oil, BN030. BN036, BN037, et BN040. Nous commandons les consommateurs pour vous servir immédiatement et vous tenez et puis vous si vous pour place côté ou acheter pour recevoir tout l'argent vivre entièrement. Les autres monde qui ne vous ont plus d'informations, et bien clarification, quand ils pour faire contact et puis département les consommateurs en niveau 468. 4229 Merci à Pio Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned for more NTN programming.